Hello, and today we're going to be doing POTW activity 2.2.1, going the distance for, uh, for principles of engineering. Uh, in this activity, we're going to first, you first start by looking at the difference between open and closed uh, loop control system. Uh, we won't spend time doing that. We're going to focus today on our coding, writing our code. Uh, so once you've discovered the difference between open and closed loops, uh, then it has you go to this uh, code v5vex.com uh, coding environment so we're going to go there and it has you start by going file new text project and we're going to select our project language which in this course we're going to use python uh, it opens up a blank code here and then we're going to use that code to start uh, pro uh, programming and in this one programming for a robotic device we build that's driving back and forth uh, so on this we're going to begin our project code uh, you're going to build a little robot that can drive in one direction and you want it to stop before it hits a wall or an object uh, to do that we need to have it be able to have a motor so you set up your robot it may have one mo motor it may have multiple motors whatever we want to come up here on the top right and click uh, devices that third icon over and then add a device if you have a two motor or four motor or some sort of motor group you would select this I'm going to keep it simple and just do a single motor today then you select whatever port you plug that motor into on your physical brain so on this one uh, I plug mine into port one so I'm going to select one then you want to make sure, in this case it doesn't have that big of an effect, but later on in some activities it will. Uh, you want to make sure you select the type of motor. So when you look in your motor, you should be able to see whether it's red, green, or blue. You want to select which one it is. If you need to reverse your motor so it goes in the opposite direction, you could reverse it here as well. I'm going to change my motor name up here on the top to, drive mo to motor drive because it's going to be what's driving our device. Then I'm going to hit done and now I've added this motor into our code and that's done if you want to expand it out you can see it's done in these first uh, 37 lines of code you can see motor drive and it tells us all that information we added typically we hide that information and it automatically does that in the background for us uh, where you're going to actually begin your code today is under where it says begin project code so that's where our first line of code is going to go that we're adding and creating uh, so to do that we're going to uh, go over on the left hand side under this tab that says code we want motor and we want the motor to spin forward which is that very first one so we'll drag that over and just drop that below the, ha the hashtag begin project code in line if you put it above it's not going to function it's not going to do what you need it to do uh, so we want to do motor drive spin forward uh, it automatically changes it to whatever we name that motor or motor train that you have connected uh, this will cause our motor to move. Uh, next, we want to make sure our brain is connected. So you want to physically turn on your brain if you have not done so. Uh, make sure you have a battery plugged into it so you can turn it on. And then you're going to come up here on the top right and select brain, connect. Uh, it gives us this pop-up. We hit continue. And then you want to make sure you hit the VEX robotic, robotics communication port and you connect that as well. Once you do that, then you'll be able to download your code uh, to your brain by clicking on the download button. Uh, it asks if we would like to save our project. We're going to say OK. And we're going to save it, pick a location to save it. I'm just put mine in my downloads. And I'm going to name it uh, my initials BG uh, space 2.2.1. I've already done one previously, so it's going to ask me to overwrite. And I'll replace that. Uh, that downloads it to our... Uh, uh, brain and then you come over to your brain and you actually start uh, working with your brain on it So I'm going to pause it and we're going to do that on off So we have the code uh, Downloaded to our brain. There's a little bit of a glare there, but we have that downloaded to our brain uh, to run it All we going to do is hit run and then our motor is going to spin. I got motor over here And it's just going to spin and it's going to spin forever until we tell it to stop or until the battery dies uh, So I'm just going to hit back and then I'm going to hit stop to stop it uh, now we'll go back to our coding environment and do some changes. So our current code just has our motor run forever. Uh, typically you wouldn't want it, want it to run forever. So now we're going to add another line of code that's going to have it wait for a second and then stop our motor. So to have it wait, we're going to go to the control tab here on the left side. And we're going to drag and drop this wait one second time over. Uh, so that's going to cause it to wait for one second. 
Uh, then next we need to tell it what to do after it waits for a second. So it starts spinning the motor, it waits for a second, then what do we want it to do? I'm going to go up to motion and then I'm going to hit uh, motor stop and drag and drop that over. So we want it to stop moving then. Uh, so that's going to cause our motor to stop. Uh, depending on how you have your uh, build set up, it may be difficult to press your button and have it drive right away. So above this motor drive line, I'm going to add a line to wait before it starts to go as well. So I'm going to go back to my control. I'm going to do wait, drag and drop that one second over. And I'll delete that extra line I added in. And then you can change that time. Typically it's not going to take you a full second. It may just be half a second. So I'm going to change that to 0.5 seconds. And we can adjust and change that wait time. As long as you have the unit afterwards, it's going to know how long to adjust it to. Once you have that change completed, again, we need to download it to our brain. So if you've disconnected, make sure you reconnect your brain, and then you download it to that brain. Uh, once we download it, we'll test that code in, on our brain. So we have that new code uh, downloaded to our brain. I'm going to hit run. It's going to wait half a second, run for a second, and then stop. Next, as you download uh, that pr code to your brain, uh, it's going to allow you to test and see how far your actual robotic device uh, runs for, and you're going to record that in a data table. Uh, we're going to change that wait time then. You can change it to different values. Let's say we want to go two and a half seconds. We'll change that wait after our motor starts to spend it two and a half. Again, make sure to reconnect your brain if you need to and download that to your uh, robot and test different uh, wait times and see how far it goes. Uh, you want to get different values and then your teacher or instructors to give you a set distance for you to try to make it go and use those values to de determine that. So next now, sometimes you don't want to just use wait times to control your device. A lot of times it's going to be more accurate or better values or easier to work with changing environments if we add a sensor. Uh, so in this case, we're going to add what's called an ultrasonic range module or a range finder. Uh, this is, uh, it's got, it sends out sound and then it waits for that sound to come back and it uses the time it takes to determine how far an object is in front of it. Uh, to use this, we have to plug in. It's got two sets of three wires. Uh, one's labeled input, the other one's labeled output. Well, when we plug it in, we're going to plug the output in first and then the input to the following port. Uh, so the output's the one with the orange wire. When we plug it in, it doesn't matter specifically what port it's in. However, I'm going to put it in C. And whatever one you put your output in, then your input, the one with the yellow wire, has to go in the one directly following it. So in this case, it's going to have to go in D. Uh, so I got those into C and D, and that's going to allow us to run our uh, range finder. Now we're going to go back into our coding environment and set it up in there. So now we have our range finder plugged into our brain, but we haven't coded for it yet. So now we have to again come over here on the right side, uh, click on the third icon over, which is devices, and add a device. Uh, a range finder is going to be classified as a three-wire device, so we're going to come down to the bottom and click three-wire. Typically, then you can have to scroll up and find range finder. We select range finder, and then you click the ports it's plugged into, C and D. If you want to change the name of it, now would be the time to change the name of it. I'm just going to keep it as range finder C. Uh, we click done, and now we're back in our coding environment, and I'll minimize this uh, part of the screen over. Then, once we have that uh, coded in, now we're going to adjust our code. So instead of waiting, uh, we're actually going to use our range finder to see how close an object is and control our motor function that way. So I'm actually just going to delete all the code I already have. You could comment it out, but we'll look at do how to do that next lesson. Uh, so then again, I got everything deleted. And we're going to start by going to our control. And we're going to add a while loop. So while, and this is going to create an infinite loop. So while condition and then pass. We want to change where it says condition to something that's always true. And the easiest way to do that is just to write capital T, R, lowercase r, U, E, or true. Uh, so while true, you could do some other statement that's always true, like 1 equals, equals 1. Uh, but while true is going to work for us here. Then that gives us a statement. And then it's indented for the line below it because it's going to be within this while statement. Uh, so while we're in the statement, what do we want it to do? Pass is just a placeholder. We want to replace that with what we want it to do. So 
next statement is going to be we're replacing that pass and we'll replace that with an if else statement. So we're going to go if and it's going to say if condition pass else pass. So this is if and we're going to do if the rangefinder is less than a set distance we're going to have the motor run else if it's not we're going to have the motor stop. So first we have to replace this condition uh, with the rangefinder. To find that we're going to go under sensing we're going to scroll down to rangefinder and we want rangefinder distance. So we're going to place that right where it said condition. We're not done with our condition. So if, and then it's going to pull the value from our rangefinder. And then we want to see if it's more than or less than a value. So in this case, I'm going to have it run while it's this value. So if it's greater than, and I'm just going to put 200 in this case. We can change this value later if we need to. Uh, so if it's more than 200 millimeters, then we have to tell it what to do. So we're going to replace this past statement. So I'm going to replace that past statement. I'm just going to click right in front of it and we'll delete it in a second. We're going to go to motion just like we did before and we'll tell it to run our motor, motor spin forward. And then I'm going to go down and delete this past statement. That was just a placeholder. So it says if our rangefinder is greater than 200 millimeters, then the motor is going to spin forward. Then we have to tell it what to do if it's not greater than 200. So we're going to go to else, and then we're going to tell it to stop the motor. So I'm going to replace what says pass. Again, I'm under the motion tab, so it should have stop. And I find my motor stop, and I put that into our statement. Then we're going to delete the pass statement because we don't need that. Uh, if you notice, after the while true, after the if statement, and after the else, it's got uh, colon, it's important that you keep those colons. If you don't keep those colons, it's not going to read appropriately. It's also important that you have things indented appropriately. So the while statement leads to an indentation, and then the if statement also leads to an indentation, and the else has that same indentation. Uh, those are important things to have. Once you have all that set up, then we're going to click download. It's going to download to our device, and we'll watch this, and hopefully it works. So we have that new code downloaded to our device. We have to hit run. Uh, it runs, and then our rangefinder has nothing in front of it, so it should continue to run. Then if I stick my hand in front of that rangefinder, you can see the motor stop. Then I pull my hand away, and now our motor continues to run. I put my hand back, it stops. I remove my hand, and it continues to run. And this will keep going until we stop our code. Uh, so eventually, you go back in your VEX and stop that code. If you download it and it doesn't work, one possible error could be that your rangefinder is not giving you uh, the correct value or you're not close enough to the rangefinder. So you could go back and change that 200 to a 300 or to a 400. Or if it's too far away, you can make it a smaller value like a 150 or 200. Uh, the rangefinder works best between about one and a half inches and about a foot. Uh, so if you try to do something really far, or really very, very near, it's not going to be as effective and you may not get correct values. Uh, so hopefully this helps you with activity 2.2.1 and principles of engineering. Have a great day.